coach, you get Tyree Jackson back hopefully this time around, and uh, you're starting to get a little something out of Miles James too. Are the numbers starting to work in your favor a bit? Well, hopefully, you know, Pig was able to practice yesterday, so I think that'll help, you know, with perimeter depth. Uh, I think that does help. I mean, it helps in practice, and, and, and that, that'll hopefully, hopefully get us better, you know, prepared. And uh, Miles gave us some good minutes against – uh, against Tulsa, I thought, and uh, hopefully that he'll continue to do that. Obviously, if you just look at the rankings with Houston and everything, I mean, is this the is this the toughest matchup of of the season so far for y'all, just on paper? And you know, what are those challenges like? Well, I think there's a couple things. I mean, I think they're you know when you look at the their defensive numbers are terrific. Uh, they're shooting the ball well in conference play, especially from the three, and their rebounding numbers have been consistent. I mean, they're four in the net. Uh, you know, when you look at their Ken Palm offensive and defensive efficiency stand, you know, ratings are very, very, you know, very, very low in a, in a, in a good way. Uh, and they're balanced. I mean, they've got a bunch of different guys. They've had guys pop, you know, Kid Chaney pops up the other day and drops 10 points in the first half against SMU and hadn't played a lot of minutes. And uh, I just think they're very well balanced and they can hit you a bunch of different ways. Joe, how do you prepare for, sorry, Bill, how do you prepare no, for a rebounding team like this i mean they get 40 percent of their misses i think they're fourth or fifth in the nation i was looking yesterday it's, does it have to be a team effort rebounding on wednesday it's got to be a team effort it's also got to be a lot of you know what they do a really good job of, <clears throat> what they do a really good job of is also uh back tipping the ball you know they run in there and they're well, i think one thing is they're not afraid to foul which is good news and they run in there and they tip it and, and, and then they run down it. So it's going to be a lot of loose balls also. I mean, they're, they're counted as rebounds, but a lot of them are really loose balls. And they do a great job of pursuing the ball, uh, whether it's on the back four, you know, Gorham is third in the country and rebounding. Uh, or if, it, if it's Jarreau from, a, you know, from the point guard spot, he's a very good rebounder and just 6'5 and very athletic. So they, they pursue it, they pursue it, they pursue it. Coach, you're in a kind of a catch-22 situation with Jaden Gardner. You have to have him to score, and when he does score a lot, typically you guys win games, but then he's scoring over 40% of your, your buckets. How important is it for other people to step up on a regular basis? Well, I think we need to get some offensive continuity. I mean, I, I, you, know, you, you know, J.J. had been off to a good start, and then he was shut down for a little <laughs> bit. I think he's trying to get his legs back under him. Uh, Tristan, we're trying to e you know ease him back. You know, you look at Tristan's number from last year to this year's number. He's averaging almost eight less points a game in conference play, and you know he was out for 16 days. You know, we had him back for a day and or two. So conditioning, I think, is going to be a big factor. And then after we had him back for a day or two, he was shut down for five days. And uh, I think he needs to get some continuity. I think we need to get some continuity uh, offensively. I thought we flowed a little bit better against Tulsa, but that's because we played a couple games now uh, and. Uh, I do think other people do need to step up. I think Tremont has, uh, you know, he's been another, uh, another weapon. Hopefully we get JJ's legs back under him. Hopefully we can get Tristan going and hopefully some of these guys can continue to improve. With a game like this, does it kind of highlight how weird and unique this season is? I mean, years past number five team will be coming in here and y'all be playing up to the crowd and, you know, stadium would be kind of packed that type of thing. And obviously it won't be that way tomorrow. Is that just kind of hit on, how tough it is maybe to not pull an upset when the fans are behind you, that type of thing? Uh, you know, I, I think one thing we're seeing is is how big a advantage home court advantage is or home field advantage is. Now, you look at the, the balance and the parity throughout college basketball and some teams that very rarely lose at home or, you know, pedestrian for their uh, usual standards. And uh, I think the one thing about it is we've been playing long enough that, you know, this year that we're used to the environment and I think we're sort of settling into it. It's, it's not going to change. So let's not worry about it. Let's worry about what we can control. And uh, we, we, at least we get an opportunity to play. So let's keep our mouths shut and play. Joe, when you were off for a couple of weeks, you know, you expressed concern about coming back and playing a lot of games uh, when your team had been not practicing, not conditioning. How do you feel about the general energy level going into the game tomorrow night? Good. I mean, I, I, I think this is going to be a work in progress. I mean, I, I do talk, you know, it's, it's made you rethink um, like we've all had to and, and adjust because you, you're, there's a fine line between getting your team prepared to play and conditioning and also over conditioning, getting guys hurt. I mean, we talk about it right now in practice, 
you know, you go through a, a stretch where you, you know, you have nine or 10 guys, and then maybe one day you have 13, the next day, day you have nine. So how do you adjust? And, uh, and then these other guys, you know, when you, when you're, when you're, when they start getting in good shape, it seems like then you, you know, maybe we've had a pause, which isn't their fault. So you shut down for five days and, uh, you know, then as you reacclimate, you're not really doing any, you know, contact. These guys right now are used to getting hit every day. And now when you don't get hit for a few days or you're running into each other, and you worry about the, those type of injuries and uh, because they're not used to it. So just trying to ha have a fine line between conditioning and also preparing them for the physicality of a game. You know, Coach, you would, uh, go ahead, Billy. <laughs> so we seem to talk over each other. Sorry, Patrick. Um, Coach, you, you had talked about continuity, obviously, with players, but there's that continuity with coaches, too, and having missed that time being out. Did you sense uh, – it seemed like I sensed that the players um, just just played a little different without their leader and, and their, their man on the floor, which is you. Did you kind of sense that, too? I think that when, when we've got a lot of, I think most of us probably as people are a little bit of creatures of habit. And when you go out there and, you know, it's, it, it feels a little bit different, you know, it might be a little bit different when a guy's out for a day or two at the sprained ankle, you, you don't miss him. But when, you know, I missed the, what, the first eight practices after Christmas. And then in a weird deal, I hadn't been in person in front of our team until last Friday since December, since January 13th. So that, that's different for the kids and, and they're looking and they're trying now, you know, you can zoom, which is good, but you know, when you step out of bounds or when you make a boneheaded play and I'm watching on zoom, like the voice isn't as the same off of zoom as it is when you're yelling, Hey, what are you doing when you're standing at half quarter? I think the things would be about being able to walk over and pat a guy on the back or ask them how they're doing in person is entirely different. You know, you can text, you can zoom, but I, I it's, I, I think it was different for those guys and, uh, they're looking for direction and the assistants have to get direction, but they're also looking, Hey, where's, you know, and as a head coach, you feel guilty. I know I didn't do anything wrong, but you feel like, Hey, I should be there leading these guys. And you know, you're sitting at home and there's not much you can do. So it's a disappointing or a, or a bad feeling as a coach, not being able to help your guys also. Joe, you've talked a little bit about, you know, execution throughout the season, bad possessions, uh, bad shots being almost as bad as a, a turnover. The last couple of games, it's been execution down the stretch. What, what are some things, you know, that you all as a staff can do to, to maybe improve that? What are you, what are you, you know, I guess encouraging the players or, or wanting the players to do a little differently because they've had opportunities the last two games in the final possessions. Yeah, I mean, it's it's we we've talked about it and and you'll continue to work on offensive execution and, and time score situation, you know, uh, opportunities. We 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 do we we do work on that. We will continue to work on it. Harvest learning how to win. I mean, I, I, and I said this to our guys yesterday. I said, guys, we're still trying to figure ourselves out. We've played 13 games and it's February. You usually play 13 games in the out-of-conference schedule. So figuring your team out. And then we've had some guys in and out. Um, you know, you know, he's in today. He's out. So just from a continuity standpoint of trying to get, uh, you know, what are you going to run? Uh, you know, we went to, you know, into the Memphis game where you're, where we're taking guys and you're saying, hey, what four plays can we run with those guys because they haven't played this position before? So that that changes a little bit about what you're trying to do. Now, at the end of the game, you got to get the ball in the best player's hands. Now, sometimes the other team takes the ball out of your best player's hands. So you have to have a you know a plan where and another guy's you know able to step up, make a play, or put people in position to make plays for one another. Joe, yeah, what do you feel like are going to be the things that uh, will put you in the, the best position to kind of be in a position? Uh, to strike? I think the big thing tomorrow is obviously going to be not turning the ball over and rebounding the ball. That, you know, those sound very simple, but that those are really, because if you don't turn it over, it eliminates some of the transition. Um, and we're going to have to guard a three point line because what happens is with Sasser and Grimes and those guys shooting a lot of threes, it also leads to a lot of long rebounds, which means there's the, you know, once the, once the ball is shot, that's where the possession begins. Joe, Tristan, um, I know he had the timeout, but is it a little, he's kind of struggled, it seems, been a little inconsistent all year. Anything you've been able to put your finger on with that, aside from, you know, just missing that amount of time that he missed earlier? Well, he's had a little, he's, he's been out, uh, he's had a little knee soreness. Uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, we've talked about, you know, 
playing he and Trey a little bit more to be able to play in those two guys together, but maybe playing him on the ball a little bit more. Um, and I do think that, uh, you know, when he, he came back, he was out for 16 days, came back and his knee started bothering him. So we shut down a little bit more and then, um, and then we paused for a little bit. And I mean, so that's, you know, you start looking at 20 something days. I mean, we, we did the math on Tyree. Tyree was in contact tracing twice. That was 14 days times two is 28 days. And then 15 days here with, you know, being out. So you think about that during the season, guys. I mean, you know, that's, that's a lot of days to be quarantined. And I don't, I'm, I'm not the smartest guy, but my, something tells me my offensive rhythm or my game wouldn't be in sync, you know, when you've been, when you've been in the cooler that long. No, it seems like uh, Houston is the dominant team in the league this year, more so than I recall, you know, one program uh, being in that position in the American in, in recent years anyway. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, when you look at their net, when you look at the rest of the team's net in the league, there's no doubt. I mean, I think the, the thing that they've done is, 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 you know, they haven't just won, they've won dominatingly. I mean, they, they've dominated every game. Um, you know, from start to finish, almost averaging, you know, outscoring their opponents almost 11 and a half points a game in the first half alone. Um, I think that's the thing that they've done is they're, they're relentless. Like I said, they can score a bunch of different ways, but I've not seen a team dominate our league. I and mean, I've only been in the league three years, but this has been a, you know, a thorough uh, domination so far. I mean, Tulsa nicked them up a little bit that, that one game, but most of these other games have been pretty lopsided. Coach, Coach, is this really is, want, uh, tempo tonight or tomorrow night in terms of matching up with Houston? Well, I think the, the, the tempo is going to be determined by, you know, if we can get some stops and rebound the ball. You still have to be opportunistic offensively because if you stand and try to grind it out every possession, you know, they're, they're terrific defensively. Now, defensively, you know, they are pretty deliberate. Uh, offensively, they are pretty deliberate. They run their stuff. Uh, they're opportunistic. Obviously, they'll push it and transition off of turnovers and, and rebounds, but uh, they are a – you know, a multiple ball screen. The bigs do a good job of slipping ball screens, and and they, they do run a good pace offensively. So we just got to be ready possession uh, to defend long possessions. Coach, I know one team dominating a league typically isn't very good, but if you look at Houston with the name, with uh, their history, and I think this is the highest they've been ranked since the Five Slamma Jamma days. Um, that's got to be good for the, the conference. It's got to be good for everybody in recruiting in that aspect to have kind of that national power and a lot of spotlight on them, even though, you know, they are doing what they're doing in conference. Yeah, I, I, I think that it is good for the league. But I think the rest of us need to step up. We need to get to where we're having, you know, five teams in the NCAA tournament, you know, on a team or two in the NIT. I think that's where you really can make a big jump uh, as a league. I mean, I think a couple of we were the, I think my first year we were the fifth or sixth ranked league in the country, in the country and uh, ahead of the Pac-12 and, 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 the, uh, and, and one other league. And, I think we need to get a little bit more balance. I think the teams that have been at the back end like us need to continue to get better. Uh, I do think that we need to get it where, uh, you know, there's some multiple team, you know, where there's four or five teams competing for NCAA bids. That's Houston's dominance is good, but the rest of us need to put ourselves in position where we can get to the NCAA tournament. Anything else for coach guys? I've got a question, Jody. Sure. Um, the rescheduling, uh, and I may have missed something. If so, I apologize. But has there been uh, any more uh, developments in terms of rescheduling games that were missed? Uh, we, we, you know, obviously we rescheduled the Temple game. Uh, the, the Temple game, we're going to play that Thursday, <clears throat> excuse me, that Thursday, Saturday. Uh, we're still talking. I mean, there's so many scenarios. I mean, one side of me says, you know, it's how many are you going to reschedule? And in the back of your mind, you're also saying, what are we rescheduling for? We're going to have to reschedule the rescheduled games. I mean, you, you look around. I mean, you know, there's a number of teams in our league that haven't shut down uh, yet. I mean, so – and I'm, and hopefully they don't. But my point is, as you look around, uh, you know, more and more teams are pausing again. And, um, you know, there's a, n a number of teams – you know, Cincinnati still hasn't played, you know, since they shut down before us, USF – you know, shut down, you know, same time as us and they still haven't played. And I, I don't know how they're, you know, we've played three games. I don't know how they're going to make up those additional games. And also with the safety and, and, and well-being of the players from a, you know, a playing standpoint, not just a COVID standpoint, but, uh, you know, if you're going to jam eight games into 12 or 13, you know, 14 days, that's not fair to the kids, in my opinion. Thanks, Coach. 
We're good, guys. All set, guys. Have a good day. All right. Thank, Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Jody. See you guys. Julie.